for me, doing a PhD is a way of life more than anything. You, you become every part of the research team, but you're still one person. And the experiences I've got from that are invaluable. And now I feel more confident and uh, competent as a researcher than I used to be. I am interested in cities and communities, specifically how people come together for a larger cause. So my research looks at protests and dissent movements in urban spaces and what really helps people connect with each other and to the places that they inhabit. My PhD is in history and I'm looking at the People's Democracy, which was a new left student movement that started here and putting their development into conversation with that of a group from the United States called the Students for a Democratic Society. So what I'm researching is the development of a new timber product that can be used in construction. Um, so what it will be is um, made of homegrown Irish timber um, and it will just be a layer up of timber um, that just creates a really strong panel. Um, it has been done before in other countries, but not using Irish timber. Uh, my PhD research uh, focuses on the real issue which faced with the pregnant women uh, in Jordan, which is preeclampsia and eclampsia. During the last years, the incidence and the prevalence of preeclampsia and eclampsia increased in Jordan. So uh, my PhD research will focus uh, um, uh, in the causes or in the reasons behind this increase. I'm doing my research in civil engineering, uh, especially in construction management. Uh, my research is about to develop uh, an automated risk assessment tool to predict the delays in construction projects in GCC by using the artificial intelligence tools. My current PhD research centers around genetic control of schistosomiasis snail vectors. My research is all disability based, so my study is entitled Social Participation and Quality of Life in Adults with Cerebral Palsy. So coming from Africa where we have many parasitic diseases that are often neglected as well, so I developed this strong interest in becoming a leading researcher in the field of neglect neglected tropical diseases. Then I found Queen's as one of the top UK universities that have you know, great research facilities in my field of study. I actually come from a family of academics, so PhD life was very normal in our house. I'm the last one of four to do a PhD. So it had always been in the back of my mind that it was an option. Um, I spent a couple of years traveling after I did my master's. And once I came home, I thought, OK, it's maybe time to pursue my, my interest in, in research. My major uh, 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 maternity and newborn health nursing is always in demand in Jordan. So this is uh, considered as an important point for me. Uh, also, uh, my family is um, uh, being an uh, academic family, so they are always uh, encouraging me and uh, support me. So before I started um, my PhD or my master's back in the US, I was originally teaching at secondary school level. So I was always interested in pursuing education in general. Um, but as I was teaching at that level, I decided to dive more deeply into the topics and fields that I was interested in. And as I was doing that, I just came across um, different kind of avenues of research and thought that hadn't been explored sufficiently, or at least I didn't think in my opinion yet. So when I picked my topic, um, the people's democracy, when I decided it was definitely the history route I wanted to go, I figured, OK, let's reach out to Queens and see if that would be um, something that would be appropriate. And it, it's worked out very, very well. Uh, well, uh, there are several ways for you to fund yourself. Of course, there is a self-funded option where you look at your expenses and your finances on your own. But of course, there is a lot of support available. You first have to look at what kind of scholarships your home country offers you. But in the UK as well, there are a lot of funding bodies that you can look at. And when you're connected with your school, they, of course, they help you find those kind of resources. And of course, the, uh, the university website is also a good uh, repository of every scholarship and funding that's available to PhD students. So I'm actually self-funded. Um, I'm extremely privileged in that I did manage to teach for three years before coming, so I made some savings. I also am very well supported by my family, which is very fortunate. Um, I have a lot of friends who are self-funded because, again, being based out of the Mitchell Institute, where Leverhulme does a lot of its funding, um, there are obviously programs and opportunities for international students, local students, Irish, UK students to come and study and do a PhD. So I was fortunate to um, have my funding already sorted for me before I began my PhD. Um, so that was my supervisor had that already organized. Um, and it, it is great. It's kind of just like as if I'm 
in a graduate job um, while being able to be part of Queen's University. So one of the things that make my PhD, you know, go smoothly is the funding, full funding I got from the university through the doctoral training programs. And um, the application process was quite simple. And I would say my previous research experience uh, and my past publications uh, were the major strength of my application. Here, the cost of living uh, on, in Belfast is considered, be, considered to be the cheapest in, <laughs> in the UK. So, so someone like me who is self-funding, I'm just uh, using my savings uh, because I've, uh, I, I used to work for like 15 years of uh, 15 years experience and I've used these savings to, to fund my, my PhD program. Um, I decided to come to Queen's because the people that I interacted with were just the most loveliest people that I have met. The kind of humility that they had to share their knowledge with me, to share their research with me, even when I was not associated with the university, was uh, really fascinating to me. Um, I uh, found my supervisor by luck, I think, and she was just so generous and so gracious over emails that finally I decided to come here. I'm, again, very fortunate uh, to be working under Richard English, who is someone whose books I had read growing up, so I never really thought I was going to get the chance to even meet them, let alone study under them. Uh, actually, uh, since I'm coming here, uh, from the first day, I found uh, the people who are here uh, uh, so kind with me. They are always smiling, and if I need any, any help, they are always uh, help me. We have a whole collection of interdisciplinary uh, scholars, whether they're in history, politics, a lot of them study AI, stuff that like, is not really what I do, but we'll all get together at lunch around one o'clock and we'll talk about you know, what we're working on. So it's just a very stimulating kind of day-to-day -day environment. Because at the end, I, I know that the supervisors are very important and they are playing uh, an important role in uh, guide me or super, super, making supervisions for me, but uh, at the end, the, the colleagues, um, to, to find someone from your position who are giving, me, giving you the the advice and the recommendation and what his experience is a different story. I've been really fortunate to attend a lot of things during my PhD so far. We run an annual conference here at Queen's between Queen's University and Ulster University and all PhD students can attend that. Um, I also was able to secure funding to travel to Slovenia for a conference um, at the beginning of this year and I was also fortunate enough to win a travel scholarship from the School of Nursing so I've just come back from two weeks in Australia um, and all those things have been so good for um, developing my learning, developing my study, but also helping to network um, for future opportunities. I, I met people I've, I was even looking up to when I was back in Nigeria. I was like, wow, so it was, it was really a great opportunity to meet people as well. And I felt like even after I live here, I can still maintain that you know, relationship with them and then for future opportunities and collaborations. Within my PhD, I was fortunate to get to go to um, South Africa for um, a conference. So I was able to go out there and present my work um, to people all over the world. The workshops that are offered by the Graduate School are incredible. In fact, I start every week by searching on the events page to see what's coming up and fill up any free slot in my diary with a workshop or an event. So there's plenty to choose from. There's a lot of benefits uh, to get a PhD uh, degree, uh, specifically in Queen's uh, uh, University Belfast. Of course, I will get a lot of a new experience. Uh, I will enhance my uh, experts in my major. For me, it's my love of research is what pushed me towards doing one. It's research that I want to do once I finish. So it's obviously a great starting point to have. I've already made those connections. Um, even though I'm not finished, I have ideas for what I'm going to do next. And I think it's interesting that if you're going to go into a PhD, you need to go into it with your eyes open. And this is three to four years of very intense work. So like you need to be committed and interested and hopefully, if nothing else, coming out being really excited about the research you've created. It's busy, but I know that at the end of it, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of skills that have come out of it.